Your host Todd Fox and Fernando the Lone Star Halo brought to you in part by Noble L Works just outside of Anaheim Stadium and the Pond or the Honda Center where you can get drink specials just by mentioning Halos in the infield. Also brought to you in part by 714 Tickets. 714 Tickets. 714 Tickets is a place to go to get 10% off of any ticket purchase just by also mentioning H-I-T-I, Halos in the infield. Now enjoy the show. Hey, 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 it's the Tuesday podcast of the daily podcast show on the Halos in the infield baseball network. Take two. Only me and Fernando know about take one. So uh, with that being said, Fernando, how you doing, my friend, the Lone Star Halo? My name is the Lone Star Halo, and that's my co-host, Todd. And I'm Todd Fox, and that's my co-host, Fernando. Hey, we've been coming at you daily for the last three weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> and we're so glad to be here. No, it's, oh, been, uh, it's been a month. <laughs> we've gone through a month of these daily episodes. <laughs> Thankfully, Todd's uh, flexible with me today. Uh, there is a big storm of brewing in these here parts. And no, that's not me making fun of people who live in Texas who talk like that. Uh, there's a there's a storm rolling on in here, and uh, I told Todd maybe we should go a little earlier today. Yeah, I saw the weather on that. Uh, doesn't look too good in your part, so hunker down if you got a chance to. Uh, as soon as this show is over with, hopefully everything's going good. So we got a storm of brewing in the baseball community with the Angels, and we'll talk about some of the stuff that's going on, news and notes. But Fernando, what's on tap for the show? So what we want to talk about, because the Angels game is still currently going, where we currently stand at 3 nothing Angels. So hopefully Todd Fox is talking about a uh, post-game show win. And uh, since by the time this comes out, yesterday's post-game show would have already happened, you could still go back and listen to the post-game show if you missed it, as you can for any of our post-game shows or future post-game shows. Follow us on YouTube, all that stuff. But today... We're going to talk about some of these young guys. So some of you guys might know every single day on game days, we have the question of the day. And today's question of the day got a pretty good amount of engagement. It was specifically about Nolan Shanuel. Now, you and Rob have already touched on the Nolan Shanuel thing and the fact that his on-base streak was reversed by Major League Baseball. I know you guys covered that. I'm sure it's going to naturally come up as we talk about Nolan Shanuel. But... Now that his on-base streak is over and you really look at his sample size, his on-base percentage, amazing. But his batting average, in the shitter. So we're going to talk about how concerned we are about these young guys and what the Angels do. Do you let these guys figure it out at the major league level or do you send them down so they can figure it out in Salt Lake, Rocket City, that kind of thing. Okay. So that's my long-winded answer on what we are going to talk about. So real quick, before we get into that, I want to bring up the fact of something that you and I talked off air of. Angels tickets are $4 already. <laughs> you yeah. can go on TickPick, you can go on 714 tickets, and you can find seats for like $5. Mm-hmm. I think Ron Holt had said, you can come on over to 714tickets.com, and we have seats for $6. They had field-level seats for like 10 bucks. Yeah. Are we in that era of Angels baseball now, Todd, where tickets are going to basically be free? You, people are going to start leaving those memes or like, I had two Angels tickets in my car. Someone smashed my windshield, left two more. Yeah. Now I have a family four pack. Yeah. We're, we're getting <laughs> there. We're getting there because, um, you know, even Tampa Bay used to get some fans. We used to get about, you know, we used to complain because it'd be like, oh, there's only 27 thousand maybe thirty thousand there at the ballpark there was a lot of empty seats because tampa bay was in town or the texas rangers when they were god awful when they would come to town they, they don't travel well so you'd have about twenty five thousand. it's not really a big draw for angel fans especially when texas is in the in the crapper uh not this year's texas or last year's but usually you know you had those teams that just didn't travel good and and, and, and Angel fans would be, you know, called out for it because it'd be a midweek series where they didn't want to go see Tampa or Texas or another crappy team. But, you know, now we're going to get to, man, I wish the Angels stadium would be 30,000 seats. Instead, we only got 15 to 17. You know, it's go- it's going to go down because, again, you don't have the star power there as much as you had. A lot of people don't believe in this team and rightfully so. 
And uh, the Angels got to win their fans back. Okay, so aside from winning, because we know that winning is easier said than done, is there anything the Angels can do in the interim to win their fans back? Well, I think you you have to have faith in your organization. We know that's not going to happen. So the logical thing that would would help, let's just say a guy like Dana, who's already been sparkling down in the minor leagues, did really good in in um, spring training. If if this organization had three or four more good young players that are knocking on the door, or let's just say Adele, oh, hits oh his like Andrew Cuero and uh, Kai Bush, yeah, those guys that we used to have. Yeah, <laughs> no. If, if if we had guys that were knocking on the door coming up, you get your more hardcore fans to come first because they want to see these guys they've been following when they do watch Rocket City games or follow Salt Lake games. When they get to the majors, you want to see that maturation. But if you don't have that right now, which we don't, and the players that we do have up here are having their growing pains, they're not exactly blowing it up. Adele's not that next coming of Mike Trout yet, or if he ever will you're you're just going to be disappointed so long story short i we don't have either we don't have an organization turnaround with a you know ownership a new owner to maybe bring back the fans to reinvigorate the the um the experience at the ballpark we don't have a new stadium being renovated we don't have young players on the cusp and five star re- recruits ready to come up we don't have any of that so I think at, at this point, the logical answer would be we have to win. I think the worst thing this organization did was go into the offseason and tell fans, hey, we're going to be aggressive this offseason. That's the biggest mistake they could have made. And here's why. Because you you got everyone excited, right? And that is what it is. But now your casual audience is like, you know, the people who don't make baseball their lives like we do. and Let's be honest, everyone who's listening to this podcast, we probably don't have a lot of casuals listening. So with that being said, we love baseball. We live the bulk of our lives centers around baseball for most of us. But, you know, Jerry, who works at the Tilly's Distribution Center in Irvine, who's, uh, you know, <laughs> lived in Orange County for, you know, his whole life. And the Angels are just kind of there. And he's just kind of like, hey, let's, I'm going to take my family to the game, whatever. I mean, maybe tickets are cheap. And he's like, oh, hey, man, I can get my family in for like 30 bucks. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, that guy who's going to the game and he dragged his family there. And, you know, the kids are like, hey, what are they giving out a shut up? They gave me some freaking poncho or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. you this giveaway out if you don't care about Um. Now his family's there. He's going through the roster. He's like, who's this guy? Who are these guys? Like, they know mm-hmm. Mike Trout and then a bunch of nothing. You know, hey, where's that uh, Shoshani guy? Where's you know, where's that guy? Yeah. Where's where's that Japanese cat? I don't see him anymore. What about that uh that, that Pioho guy? A uh, poo holes or whatever. That uh that guy who used to play left field, uh uh the, the black guy, you know what I mean? Like that's yeah. let's be honest, right? That's that's how those it would casual be. fans mm-hmm. who they don't give a rat's ass about angels baseball. Those guys aren't going to come to the games with their family anymore. Right. And that's why you got tickets for $4. Yeah. I think, I think all that, all that being said with the, with the angels, just, you don't have that star power that every year, you know, the Dodgers got to go to, to you know, they get these free agents or whatever. They get players developing and everything. The angels are just, you know, they're in a drought. And right now with them not winning, you know, again, I think what's going to come down to this year, if this team is very mediocre, which they should be or under 500, which I hope they're not, but they most likely will be again, your biggest crowds are going to be star Wars night country week. You know, every time they have a, a a really good giveaway, which this year they actually do the Zach Neto Jersey, the bobblehead of a hoppy. Um, That's coming up, right? Yeah, unless a team like Philly comes to town, which is hardly ever here, which I think that'll sell out that series, you know, you're not really going to see, you know, a a big turnout. Like when Atlanta comes, yeah, but the amount of sellouts, if you're thinking this team's going to equivalent to 3 million fans again this year, you're poorly mistaken. I think if if Artie thinks that's going to happen, he's mistaken big time. 
Yeah. So the one of my biggest points that I was trying to br- uh, bring up uh, that I think I missed on, uh, so I'm going to try a second time, was <laughs> the fact that because they didn't make any of those signings and they lied to you know their hardcore dedicated fan base. I, I just think it was a missed opportunity by not being honest from the beginning, right? I mm-hmm. think the hardcore fans would be a lot more excited if they were just honest from the beginning. Hey, we're going to patch up some holes. Our biggest issue was the bullpen. We're going to repair the bullpen. We're going to make every – we're going to take every opportunity to repair the bullpen. But what you see on the field from last year to end the season is what you're going to get this year. We might plug a hole or two, but that's it. If that was the case – and that was the expectation this whole offseason, I think we could be at peace with that. But the fact of the matter is they lied to the fan base. They weren't upfront about it. And they were like, hey, we're going to contend. We're, hey, we're going to make some moves. And they just never did. I think that's what is going to leave a stain in the mouth of those people who are like fringe fans, right? Oh, yeah. And it's going to give every opportunity for fans like myself and others – who are just waiting for this thing to fall apart or for someone to say, Hey, you know what? Um, I told you so because yeah. not to get ahead of ourselves, but they signed a pitcher in police act in the off season to possibly make a shot at a, a rotation spot. The same day that still Seth undergoes an MRI where she were crossing her fingers for good news. Police act is released. <laughs> and you're talking about, that's one of our biggest free he agents. Was DFA'd. He might get traded. <laughs> oh, there you go. Well, yeah, he's still he part it. of the – yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. and Levon Soto uh, was somebody who also got designated for assignment. And, I mean, we've seen him clear waivers. Actually, no, he got picked up, right? And then we he got released, and then we got him back. We got him back. Yeah, it's, it's just the fact that everyone's going to have that excuse to say or that, that right to say, how come we didn't get pitching? You know, so anytime we suffer an injury pitching wise, we should have got Bauer. We should have got this guy. Should have got that guy. And I agree. I'm not. I'm not Roger Lodge saying no. I only care about who's on the roster. No, they've had ample opportunities, and they did, like you said, disappointed their fans by not signing clear free agents that we could have afforded to help this team. Because if we weren't going to rebuild like you've been asking for, you said it yourself in the off season. Then let's. Let's throw some more, you know, money in the pile, and let's get some players to help the team. If we're not going to rebuild, do the opposite. And we we stayed the course, like you said, and that was your biggest worry. Yeah, I, I was always upset about the Angels for the last decade being half in, half out, and and that's yep. still the case. Half yep. in, half out. Everyone was like, "Oh, well, no, they've had a silent rebuild. There's no such thing as a silent rebuild. You are rebuilding, or you are not." Yep. And the fact of the matter is this: the Angels. Over the last decade, I mean, really, probably the last, like, you know, 20, 25 years have not had an actual rebuild. Nope. And there was nothing wrong with that until about, like, I would say after, like, the 2017 season. Hell, you can even make the argument for 2018 because they just got that show. You know, they just got Shohei Otani. They got Mm -hmm. the new phenom from Japan. They wanted to give it a chance, Um, you know. And in 2018, Otani was was fine. wasn't amazing, right? Nope. You know, he won rookie of the year, but I think he won rookie of the year because of the marketability of it. And then after that, he didn't really become Shavio Tani until 2021, 2022, where he became the best player in baseball. But the fact of the matter is the Angels had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity to rebuild, and they never did. And now they are suffering over something that should have taken place 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. And, I mean, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they, they should they should be where Baltimore's at, to be honest Absolutely. with you. At least <laughs> you know, they, they should we should be looking at players that are like, hey man, this guy, did you see the play? I mean, we should I mean to I'm so jealous of Baltimore and the and how they've been able to enjoy this little maturation and, and these players coming through. And it seems like every time they turn around, they're like, Man, we got this guy down and in triple A, you know, Gunnar Henderson's up now. This guy's tearing it up. He had a great year last year. You know, we weren't supposed to get that far and we're ahead of schedule. It's like the optimism and excitement in that fan base is off the charts and it's, it, they deserve it. Number one. And number two, they should be. And, and I'm jealous because we're constantly in a negative attitude or when things that are positive happen, it's few and far between. That's the problem, bro. Or 
you know, it, it's something that gets taken away from baseball. I mean, you know, you guys already touched on what Ray Randazzo said in the last podcast. I mean, look at Nolan Chanuel. I mean, a guy who really the only thing he's got going for him right now was his on-base streak. It's not his batting yeah. average. It's not his power, and that's fine. He's not a power hitter. Hell, it's really not even his defense. So it was the fact that he was getting on base consistently, right? It was something positive, something to be excited about. Major League Baseball took that away from Angels fans, from him. Because besides that, at the current moment, once you strip away the young guys, we don't have much else to be excited about or to cheer for. We don't. And all we have is the hope that Trout can – you know, lead the club, which is something he's not good, uh, good of doing. And also the fact that he he's got to stay healthy, but to segue into one of our comments or one of your topics that you wanted to bring up. And that was, you know, the Shauna well thing. I had a take on this in the post game where I felt, man, he's, it kind of feels like a sophomore slump, but the only difference is, you know, he's banging his knee and he's talking to himself when he leaves. So he's like, okay, I got to make a mental note. I got to watch that pitch. Cause if you've noticed, they've, he, he was getting a lot of pitches last season at the end of the year up in the zone, and now they're pitching him low. He's getting a lot of sinkers and splitters, and he can't hang with those right now, and that's where he's getting out a lot. Dude, can you believe that Nolan Shanuel was born in 2002? You feel old? <laughs> I sure do. I mean, yeah. think about uh, think about tomorrow uh, today's date, which is Tuesday. Nick Aidenhart passed away. Uh, this is the Tomorrow. anniversary of his but, but today, yeah. when you guys are listening to this, yeah, 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 absolutely. absolutely. That's crazy. We still remember where we were at that time, you know. Yeah, yeah, I remember uh, tuning on, uh, turning on ESPN in the morning because that was something people still did back then, and mm-hmm. uh, that was like the top story. You know what I mean? Well, it was. It was for me. It was. Uh, we. Used, I used to watch KTLA Morning News every morning, and I turned it on uh, as I was getting ready my breakfast on, and they were showing angel highlights i'm like why are they showing angel highlights they never show angel highlights and then it was just nick aiden hart the car crash and i couldn't believe i was stuck to the tv i was almost late to work dude yeah it's it's crazy uh because we just both dated ourselves i mentioned watching espn you mentioned watching the news in the morning that's something people probably don't really do anymore for (laughs) either of those (laughs) most people get their news from you know their phones now you know you can get the emails you can get Text messages news now. You can get it on Twitter. You can get it on YouTube. You know what I mean? Nobody's watching the news on cable anymore, at least not many people. Yeah, because um, for yeah. something that you had to wait 40 minutes for the telecast to talk about, now you can just get yeah. it instantly. So why watch yeah, something? Yeah, you can get a you- YouTube video about it. You can get the whatever ABC segment about it. Mm-hmm. If, you know what I mean? So, yeah, and not sit uh, through commercials. Yeah, you know? Yeah. Why Why do you want to watch ESPN now when the only thing you cared about was that 60 seconds of Angels highlight? You know, when you woke up in the morning, you had to get the paper to find out if the team won, like if you went to sleep. Mm-hmm. You had to, you know, hear from a family member. You had to wait for, you know, on the bottom, it would show the scores. You'd have to wait for that to come on. Yep. Or you'd have to wait for their clip to see the highlights. And that was it. That's how you found out. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, so now that we feel old, Let's talk about Nolan Shanuel and the fact that he's batting 0. 0.074. Uh-huh. So I know this is kind of going to be the broad question we want to answer, but are you at all concerned about his batting average? Now, strip away the fact that he's still a young kid. Mm-hmm. Is it still concerning that his batting average is so low? Absolutely, but... I I don't care about his overall ability. I know that at some point, as long as his mental health doesn't get to him to where he's feeling like he can never hit again, he's got the eye for it. He just needs to make a few subtle adjustments, and he'll be right back in the game. That's where I think a Torrey Hunter would have been great for the staff as a coach because he would take him under his wing and, and get him focused because the skills are there. I know you said defensively, not really. Yeah, I'm not impressed with him defensively. I think he's one of our weakest first basemen we've had in years. Uh, but I, I don't care as long as he can hit. And if he was hitting like he was at the end of last season, then that's fine. But I'm just worried that he's in a sophomore slump. And the quicker we get him out of it and refocus, the better. Yeah, I mean, we had mentioned this offseason that Nolan Shane, while having a sophomore slump, was something that was probable. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I meant it not because he's a bad player or anything, but because sophomore slumps are real. Happens to a lot of people. Oh yeah. So with that being said, 
I'm glad that he's having this issue this early in the season because you, he, we, we now get to see how he responds because that's what matters at the major league level, your ability to continuously get back on the horse. And, and that's kind of the beauty in baseball, right? In football, if you have a tough loss, if you have a bad game, you have a whole week to marinate on it. Mm-hmm. But with baseball, you got to go right back out there the next day. And, and the fact that Nolan Shanuel is still getting on base at least shows us that he's still capable of having productive at bat. Because if this guy wasn't walking or getting on base at all, you know, because his batting average right now, as stated, 0.074. If his on-base potential is like 100, you know, he's not getting on base, he's not getting hits, then it really turns into, okay, he's struggling defensively also, it's time to send him down. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing working for this kid right now. But he still has a good eye at the plate. He's still have a competitive at bats. And that's what matters in Major League Baseball. Are you having competitive at bats? The fact of the matter is this. Baseball is the hardest professional sport to play. Bite me, fight me, you can at me, I don't care. Harder <laughs> than hockey, harder than football, harder than basketball, harder than soccer. Yeah. The fact of the matter is hitting a baseball is hard at the major league level especially. So with that being said, it's all about how can he respond. You know, He's only at 27 at bat, so he's still pretty early on into his season as well. Yeah. And we've seen guys start off like 150 averages or lower and then freaking just take off. Uh, we've, you know, we've, if you ever, if, if anyone remembers Tim Salmon, Tim Salmon was notorious in April for batting 200 or barely over 200. And then he just started smoking in May and June. And that's sort of what Brandon Drury does. But these are established players. And that is the question you brought up is because we don't have a resume on these guys. There's not much, because if you think about it, we got four starters usually in our lineup that are rookies with Ohapi, uh, Moniak, Shauna Well, and I'm missing the other one, um, uh, Neto. No. None of those four have played a full season. So we still that is still yet to be seen. We don't know what they can possibly do. If all four have really good seasons, obviously that's a freaking blessing. But who knows what's going to happen. And so, yes, these the whether it's only nine games or the resume is not that much, we need them to start hitting. This team absolutely needs him because I'll ask you this, bro. Uh, who in the minor leagues do we have that we could officially say, hey, let's send down Sean and Will for a couple weeks? Yeah, and, and that's the big issue. So I, I saw a couple of people um, on the question of the day by Nolan Shanuel mm -hmm. say, send him down, put Drury at first base, move in Hefo to second base. Now, here's the thing. If this team was trying to contend this year, I might be like, okay, you know what? That's fine. Because when Hefo tends to do well when he has consistent reps, right? Correct. And then Drury, like you said, notorious for not being a very good hitter to start the year, right? He wasn't very good to start the year with the Cincinnati Reds. I think near the end of April, he got hot, and then he went to the Padres. He had a, I, I think as, the, as a Padre, he was pretty hot his entire time there. And then last year, he was also pretty – cold until about the middle of May, if memory serves correctly. Mm -hmm. And then he ended up being one of our best overall players by the end of last year. So we don't really have a big enough sample size to know, hey, Nolan Shanuel is going to suck the first month of the year, and that's fine. That's just him taking his bruises. He's going to figure it out. But it, it's just so hard to get a read on this guy because, once again, he's getting on base. Nobody can say that he's not having productive at-bats. The fact that he's batting at less than – Point one hundred, and he still has an on base percentage of nearly three hundred. Tells you how much this guy's getting on base. Mm -hmm. There's guys who are batting like two seventy who sometimes don't have on base percentages of three hundred. They're almost there. Yep, yep, and that's the thing. He's he's got to get. Imagine how better his numbers would be if he's if he's yeah, freaking, he's batting like two fifty or something. His on yeah. base percentage would be like four hundred. It'll be insane. It'll be like, so here's, uh, I just want to bring up real quick the sure. roster for the Salt Lake Bees. So okay. obviously we're not, we're not going to take out. We uh, don't bring up Bees, Todd. We bring up uh, members Rockets. of the Trash Pandas. Come on. I'm just, I'm just telling you who's there for the infielders. If you wanted to bring up an infielder, you got Jack Lopez, Evan White, Charles LeBlanc, Hunter Dozier, 
and uh, I don't see our boy. Um, who's the the, the uh, who's it? Stefanik? I don't see Stefanik on the roster here. Stefanik, um, is he hurt? I, he might be, but here's here's the outfielders: Jordan Adams, Willie Calhoun, Deshaun Knowles, Jack Marisnik, uh, Orlando Martinez. That's that's who you got for your infielders and outfielders for Salt Lake, and then for the bees, like you said, the bees knees. You got uh, uh, let's see the infielders. You got Sam Brown, Cole Fultonelli, Mac McCrowski, Karen Kyron Paris, Oral Vera, Eric Wagaman. And then out- outfielders are David Calbrice, Tucker Flint, and Nelson Rada, who Rada most likely will be up here. Uh, maybe if the team's in the crapper in September, but uh, yeah, wow. that's, that's what you got, man. <laughs> wow, man, I can only imagine what the billboards look like. Hey, you know what? Hey, it comes I... to the bees, they're all. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Fred? I know you are now itching to buy those seven one four tickets for four dollars later in the season. <laughs> Hearing those yeah. names, right? Yeah, I, I didn't want to go there for the D23 uh, Disney Day when they give out that Mickey Mouse bobblehead. I think it's like late August. Can't wait. <laughs> Can't wait to see some of those guys. I mean, uh, really, uh, honestly, I do want to see Kyron Paris play in person. I feel like that could be kind of fun. Uh, I got to see Jordan Adams give up that home run ball here in Texas last year. Oh, yeah. And he that jumped was awesome. over the fence and it went over and it bounced off his glove. I'm like, ah, oh, wasn't it Joe Adele? <laughs> it's always in that ballpark, too. Yeah, that that is that is uh did that one with Jose Canseco back in the day happen at that park too or at the old Arlington? Well, yeah, the, the one directly across the street. Yeah, <laughs> yes. and then what? And Joe Adele in twenty twenty, I think it was here in Texas too, right? I think yep, it made that, his was, debut. <laughs> that was Texas. Yeah. See, well, the let problem me... with Joe Adele and Jordan Adams is they're both too athletic for their own good. You know what I mean? Because they can jump up. And have the ability to rob that when you know Taylor Ward couldn't. You know Taylor Ward's not the most athletic dude. Let's be honest. True, true. Here's here's another one I want to throw at you. Someone told me this. Um, you know, because Ohapi so far has been playing every game. The, uh, some fans have been wondering why isn't Ohapi getting a like a DH spot once a week, and Th- Thais the dude takes over at catcher, or if Shauna Will still struggles, and you're keeping Ohapi at the plate, put Thais at first. He's played. He actually, I think he has a better glove than freaking uh, Shanawell at first. Yeah, maybe. This part of me that wonders if Shanawell is going to be a first baseman long term. And for anyone who's like, yeah, of course he is. Where's he going to be? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Outfield. I, I don't know how good his arm. We, we don't. It's so tough because it's like we really don't even know what kind of a player Shanawell is. We know he's good on getting on base, but I mean, what else do we know about this guy? Realistically, guys, I mean, we've seen him take. Uh, let me see. In his career, he's got what like. I would say 180 at bats. Let's see. Yeah, he's Close, he 136. <laughs> yeah, he's dude. He's a fish. Out, he's barely a fish out of water. So, you know, like like he does not have that much experience. Nor does no. again. Ohapi missed 80 percent of the season last year. Yep. Uh, you had freaking Moniac come up. He, I, I don't. Do you but consider the, the Moniac? The news with Ohapi is he's been hot at the major league level. When he started the year, he was hot. When he came back to close the year, he was hot. He was hot Start yeah. the year this year, he's hot. So it's like I have a, a good enough inclination that Ohapi has what it takes to be a major league catcher. I'm not going to say something naive at this moment like, hey, he can be a top 10 catcher in baseball. He has the potential, sure. Yeah, I yeah. like what I see out of him. But it's too early to make a bold statement like that. I can certainly see a path where Logan Ohapi is a top 10 catcher in major league baseball offensively i I don't think he's ever going to fully be there defensively but i'll take top 15 defensive top 10 offensive any day okay let me let me ask you this question then and i'll put all four guys in it maybe you could stack them one through four and i think i know who your number one is at least but number one being the best chance to stay on the roster all year whether struggles or not or or you don't think he's gonna the likelihood of struggling to not struggling not struggling being one struggling four between the four players how would you rank them uh and this is shanuel ohapi neto, neto moniac uh-huh. well moniac's out of options so okay. by default <laughs> i guess i'll put him at number one okay <laughs> by default i don't unless they're gonna dfa him he's staying um i think number two is obviously ohapi i i, I like where he is i honestly like 
I think it's three number ones. I think Neto's is up. I think he's here to stay. I, I don't think they're going to mess with him. I think they're going to okay. let him figure it out this year. The only guy I can see going down is Shanuel, and that's because he barely got any opportunity. They brought him up last year, caught lightning in a bottle, and they're like, hey, the lightning's still in here, but the lightning's kind of been dead for a little bit because, I mean, once again, this guy came in probably riding the, the cocaine high of, hey, you know, I'm a major leaguer, and just kept getting on base, and there was nothing wrong with that. It was good. But now push came to shove, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to really see over the next week here. Given in a week, it may be his at-bats on his good. He's maybe only getting on base like every other game. You know, his batting average is still under like 150 in a week. I, I would say, hey, you know what? Let's send this guy down to double A and just let him know like what the Arizona Coyotes said to uh, – God, what's his name? Um, I'm, I'm blanking on it. I'll, I'll remember later. Uh, they were like, hey, we're going to send you down to the minors, but just know this isn't a demotion. The difference is when they sent him down, um, they sent him down to play on the playoff team, uh, the AHL team for them. So, you know, they, they were like, hey, we want you to get that experience. But maybe you treat it like that, right? Perry brings Shanuel in. He's like, hey, we're sending you down. This isn't a demotion. It's a work on it thing. I mean, you know you belong here. We know you belong here. You don't have to prove that you deserve to come back here. We just know that your at-bats are tapering off a little bit. We don't want you to lose confidence. Go back there, find your swing, work a little bit on the defensive stuff, and we'll see you back here soon. Because there's guys who are just 4A guys, right? Mm -hmm. We've always said Joe Adele is that kind of guy. I know we're going to talk about him a little later. But I don't see Nolan Shanuel being a 4A type of guy. You can get on base at the major league level or you can't. That's the way it is. Nolan Shanuel gets on base, right? Moneyball, like in Moneyball, can he get on base? Nolan Shanuel has no problem getting on base, and that means a lot in the majors. Yeah, it does. And I think with Shanuel, you know, we if we had if he had options to go down, we could do that and feel good about it, like you said. But unfortunately. He may have to ride this one out, and I know we're recording here on a Monday night during the game. We're watching the game as it's going on, uh, but it is a Tuesday broadcast. We brought up the Aiden Hart, you know, uh, anniversary, but a little spoiler alert, uh, you know, from last night, aka right now, Rendon has two hits, so his average is well over <laughs> our, our boy Shanawell. Shanawell now has the worst average for sure. All I want to talk about is how positive. Anthony Rendon is. Oh man, I love him almost as much as I love a good old Smash Jack. <laughs> hey, you know the Smash Jacks are right in your face and all over the place. <laughs> oh, I remember when John Stamos would put his cheese on my face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we talked a little bit about Nolan Shanuel. Um, real quick, do you think he stays up here all year? I have a feeling he will only by default. If he has okay, to ride fair. the pine and be a pinch hitter or just an, not an everyday player till he gets right, he might have to go through that. Okay. Well, wasn't CJ Cron a free agent? <laughs> <What's the laughs> yeah. Hey, Mustakis. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one as well. Okay. So another guy I want to talk about, Joe Adele. Uh, mm-hmm. As of right now, I mean, I don't know uh, on Monday's game if he's going to get in that bat or two. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. But he currently only has 10 at-bats this season, okay? He's got two hits. Uh, one of those was a triple, right? He got an RBI. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's got a 200 batting average where we currently stand with an on-base percentage of 250. Do you think the Angels are doing Joe Adele a disservice by keeping him on the major league roster? Keep in mind, he is out of options. And just not giving him the opportunity to play. It's been the story of his career. The story of his career has been dicked around by the Angels. And and you said it, I've said it many a times in the past. We felt this way two seasons ago where he needed greener pastures somewhere else. For whatever reason, he's not fitting in here. He's not, it's not sinking in with him to be a consistent ball player. I would love to for him to flourish here. You would love for him to flourish here. We've we've come out on record saying how we like 
certain parts of his game, but he hasn't put it all together. Absolutely. And this was the year that me and you were in the preseason talk saying, hey, you know what? This is great. I know they got Hicks, but maybe he could platoon with Hicks or maybe get the bulk of the, the at-bats. And you watch, maybe, you know, this is Adele's final shot. This is his best opportunity to, to showcase himself. And look what's happened, Fernando. You've mentioned it in, in 10 games, 10 at-bats. Yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter is this. The Angels organization needs to figure out what they're going to do with him. Give him a chance. And when I say give him a chance, I mean put this guy as your DH um, or trade Hicks away and make Moniak your DH, and then you, you, know, you can sit Moniak when they're facing a lefty. But the fact of the matter is this guy needs at-bats because he needs an opportunity. And Correct. if that's not here, that's fine. Just DFA him. Someone's going to take him. I, I guarantee. I, I will be so surprised if he clears waivers. I don't see it. You know, Joe Waddell, we've made fun of him many times. But the fact of the matter is this. The guy wants to be here. The guy shows like he wants to be here. And there's never been a play that I've watched Joe Waddell get lazy on, not hustle out, you know, trying to beat out an infield single. You know, he's not a lazy player. And I'll always respect guys like that, you know, because nothing pisses me off more than guys who just mail it in. You know, we <coughs> know Rendon. Like, oh, yeah, exactly. I <laughs> we said at the same time, Jake, show me a soda. <laughs> we make fun of Rendon all the time, rightfully so, because he doesn't want to be there. He doesn't look like he ever wants to be there. Joe Adele does. We see yeah. him putting in the work. We see him freaking during the offseason he's jumping over a flaming hoop while riding a bus on a little clown car, you know, <laughs> While eating a pork chop, you know what I mean? Like this guy yeah. like does the most intense CrossFit exercises ever. And it's like, well, you know, if only you just practice catching a ball, <laughs> that's that's yeah, what you I'm, need to do. He's had some embarrassing moments and he's eaten crow, but he's I've given him credit for fighting back and, and never taking the negative stuff that he's gotten from our media, from other media. And he's put in the work, and I want to see him the fruits of his labor pay off. A lot, he's got a lot of haters that don't want him to succeed, but you know, I'm one, you're one that want to see him succeed, and and he could better this team. He and I think he's he can finally show it, but he's got to get that opportunity, man. And I thought Ron Washington was going to give the kid a shot. I don't know if it's Perry's call or the analytics call, but or if it's Ron's call, but I, I feel he deserves a, ch a chance, man. Yeah, I just, for whatever reason, the organization doesn't like him. They don't trust him. They don't like him, whatever the case is. Uh, so, Zach Neto, where are you on Zach Neto? The 34 at bats, he's batting 206, and on base percentage of 229. I'm concerned he's not taking more pitches. He's a little too aggressive for my liking, and he's got the Mike Trout swing right now. In spring training, he was leveled, and he was putting the ball in play, and he looked like he turned the corner from last year's team. This year, he's concerning me. So, yeah, defensively, I don't worry about him at all. But I need him to be that firecracker at the bottom of the lineup. I can see this guy definitely having gold in his future. I don't think he's going to be getting any gold gloves anytime soon. But I can definitely yeah. see an avenue where eventually he is that caliber defensive guy. Um, he's, he's a sparkler right now. He's not a firecracker, and that's my problem. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. Yes. You can get firecrackers here in Texas. You you can only get sparklers <laughs> in California. Correct. Uh, and keep in mind, this is a career 300 on base percentage guy, and he's only got 323 career at bats. Mm -hmm. But my point here is the guy's capable of seeing pitches. He's capable of getting on base. I don't know if maybe his mentality changed because he's batting ninth. Mm -hmm. So maybe now he's being a little bit more aggressive. But I, I would like to see him be a little bit more patient there. He's got four RBIs uh, through the first week. That's not a bad pace for a young guy. Yeah. So we know that he's able to put the ball through the hole. He's able to find those gaps. And that's what we want out of a guy like Zach Nino. And I, I just am hoping he doesn't turn into a launch angle, machismo kind, kind of cat. Because honestly, if this guy pops 10 home runs a year, great. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like Anderson Simmons, 10 home runs a year. That's fine because 10 home runs a year happens, right? You know what I mean? For yep. a guy who has that potential like he does. But I, I don't want that to be his game. I want him to be a slapper. I want him to be an all-fields type of guy because he's got some speed to him too. 
Well, that's that was the hope with him and Shauna Wells. If Shauna Wells batting second, let's just say you have Renifo or even stupid Rendon continuing to lead off. You know, if if Neto's able to work a walk to start an inning the second or third time through the lineup, and then you got, you know, Rendon up there who could likely work a walk or at least get a base hit like he did tonight twice, then Shanawell has an opportunity to get an RBI who's a Darren Erstad, like fly ball doubles hitter, maybe even sneak in a triple, occasionally put one over the fence. If he can move them over and not, you know, get a hit, well, then you got second and third for Trout and you got, you force the team to either walk him or pitch to him and Trout could either get a sacrifice fly or walk bases loaded. Then you got Ward and so on and so on. So it works so much better if Neto is getting on base, however he can do it. I agree with you. So the last guy we wanted to talk about here was Mickey Moniac. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think he's just kind of seven from the Joe Adele fate right now. I mean, 15 at bats, isn't really getting much of an opportunity. He's betting 0.067 with on base percentage of 220. Two, I, I think we're both going to agree with that, right? He just needs a little bit more at bats, a little more consistency. That was kind of what I, I think made him successful last year. His ability to have many opportunities. Yeah, I, I think what will come with that too. His at bats are looking a little bit better. He's not whiffing at everything like last year. Towards I think midway and and to the end of the season, he it seemed like the count, like you know how you play softball and sometimes. The, you know, you throw one pitcher and hits the plate and you're automatically 0-2. That's what it felt with him every at bat towards the end of the season. Yep. He was constantly 0-2. So at least he's taking pitches now. He's a little more selective. He's hit the ball hard, but he hasn't found the hole. And I think at some point he'll get it going. So Moniac, Neto, and Chanuel. Between those three, who are you the most concerned about right now will be currently sick? Not concerned, like, oh, cut this guy. More concerned, like, you know, I really need to see more out of this guy. Shannon Will. Hands okay. down, Shannon Will. I, I, I got it. I, like I said earlier. Even on base percentage, still behind. Yes, because I got to see him get his confidence back. You know, like you said, you brought up good points for all the other players. Maybe it's just needing more time. You've seen the fact that they've hit before, so they've got a bit of a resume. We don't know, like you said earlier about Shanawell, and that's my biggest concern is how is he going to face the adversity. So this is the first time in his career he's not the best team, best, best player on his own team, and he's got to fight through those inner struggles. Yeah, because, you know, college, high school, uh, like you said, I'm sure he was the guy, and now, I mean, you know, he's just a dude. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, as you progressively get higher, you hear from a lot of major leaguers like, hey, you're no longer the best guy on your team. And, you know, for years they were. They were. Yeah, the and he was. And look at him last year. I mean, he was the best guy in our minor league system, you know. Yeah. So yeah. reality hit him this year for sure. Well, I think he's still the best first baseman on the roster. For <laughs> you're, you're right. You're right. He's still probably the best first baseman in the organization. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you heard those all-star names that I brought up earlier. So, I mean, come on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, who were they again? I forgot already. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, after, just throw Randy Oz out there, right? There you go. <laughs> yeah. Might not get on base, but he's going to make a mean graphic. Oh, yeah. And plus, you, <laughs> when you want to talk about aggression out of the dugout, he'll beat Rendon to a fight any day. Yeah, that's true. He might even <laughs> yell at Ron Washington if he tries benching him. Exactly. Listen here, you old ass. <laughs> you ain't benching me. Love Randy, man. Love Randy. Yeah, right. uh, well, uh, I mean, that's uh, that. So, do you think it's going to be a good idea? And we'll end with this to let these guys learn at the major league level for all the guys that we've mentioned today, this young core, so to speak. Is it going to be in their best interest long term to leave them together? I think in long term, yes. Uh, would it have been ideal? No. If we had a deeper organization, the fact that we don't, we're kind of forced to. So whatever result we get from this experiment, whatever you call it, is what we're going to get. So basically, the, we got to ride with these guys, no matter what. Okay, so I, I said that was the last question, but I guess last, you know, B <laughs> question here is we, you know, make a little tree branch here and extend downward. Okay, good idea or bad idea to help those guys, you know, with their confidence for Perry, Ron Washington, whomever to come out publicly, maybe during an interview, whatever, and say, hey, these are our guys. We did nothing this offseason because we believe in these guys. 
they're going to figure it out. For better or worse, they're here to stay this year, and we're going to see this thing through. Do you think that's going to be a good idea for the organization to say that? I think it would because it's a vote of confidence in a positive way because you're saying, hey, I back my guys. I drafted these guys or I have faith in these guys. Um, you could even fall on the sword like Perry often does, doesn't blame Artie. He could even say, hey, you know what? We didn't go out and get other players because I believe so much in these guys. Even if it's not the truth, I think it would be good for some of the fans and also the players themselves to get that vote of confidence. And we all know how much we love positivity here in Atlanta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're so full of Magic Johnson, I, I tell you. Yeah, right. I'm tingling with Magic Johnson. <laughs> My Johnson's tingling with magic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, good show, my man. Uh, any final thoughts? Um, I am sorry for all the people we offended today. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wouldn't be a show if we didn't offend somebody. So That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> if right, this for... is your first show, make sure you come back. Exactly. Subscribe, <laughs> like, like the things. Do you like all the things? Hit the subscribe buttons. Do all the things they say to do. Comment. <laughs> All that. Exactly. Hit Tell that us like. why you're not never why you're never watching again in the comments down below. <laughs> so with, for Todd Fox and the Lone Star Halo. Weathering the storm in Texas. We'll catch you on the flip side.